All right, all right, Red Nation. Today I'm going to be talking about why filters are useful in X-ray and CT imaging, how filters are not just a Instagram technique, but actually we're going to be talking about physical filters, filtering out some of the X-rays in our X-ray beam and why that's incredibly useful for X-ray and CT imaging coming up here at How Radiology Works. We have our X-rays coming out of our X-ray tube, right? And we've talked about this before. We've talked about how we like to collimate those X-rays. In order to collimate the X-rays, we're actually controlling the size of the field of X-rays that are going to be used in our imaging. So you have a collimator, which is actually controlling the size of the X-rays that are going to be used in imaging. But then separate than that, we'd actually like to provide some filtration. When the area where we're actually going to be having the X-rays pass through, we would like to change the actual energy distribution of those X-rays. So remember, you have millions of X-rays that are coming in for every acquisition within every detector of pixel, essentially. And what we can do is actually, in the simplest case for X-ray imaging, we can just think about actually using a piece of metal, which is a thin sheet of metal, and then we will have the X-rays either before or after the collimator, we would have the X-rays pass through that metal so that the X-rays are uniformly passing through the metal. This is what we call a filter right here. And it could be a variety of different metals. It could be copper. It could be aluminum. But the point is, this filter is going to do something called harden our X-ray beam. So you've probably heard about beam hardening, and we usually talk about that being a bad thing. But actually, in a lot of cases for X-ray imaging, we would like to do preemptive hardening of our x-ray beam and this can help reduce those beam hardening artifacts but it can also make our acquisition more efficient from a dose perspective remember when we talked about the x-ray spectrum where we plot the number of x-rays on this axis on the y-axis on the x-axis we have the energy of those x-rays that's typically in kilo electron volts or kev right and we've talked about before how the highest energy that you can have is the P. If you have 120 kVp, you can't generate an X-ray, which is 140 keV. If our native spectrum looks something like this, then what we want to do is actually address the fact that there's a relatively large number of X-ray photons down in this energy down here. These X-ray photons actually don't stand any chance of making it through the human body. Depending on the acquisition, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, the pre-filtration that you use is actually going to depend strongly on the type of acquisition that you're doing. But for general radiography or for general seat, where you're in general trying to pass through the entirety of the human body, these X-rays down here that are in the 10, 20, even 30 keV range, they do not stand a chance of actually passing through the human body. But if you have a large human and you're trying to pass 10 keV x-rays through, it's just not going to work. So what's going to happen to those x-rays? In general, what's going to happen to those x-rays, imagine this is your person here and you're trying to take a lateral x-ray, right? If you think about this is, this is your x-ray beam coming in here. And the interactions that are going to occur is you're going to get for these. I'm talking specifically about these low energy x-rays. They are going to deposit most of their energy right near the surface of the skin. And they're not going to be able to make it through the patient. Because they're depositing most of their energy near the surface of the skin and having a very low chance of actually contributing to the image formation, we can call this essentially wasted radiation or an inefficient use of the X-ray radiation that we're using to make this image. What we want to do is actually eliminate these. The proposal is actually very simple. In between the X-ray tube and the patient, you just have a sheet of metal to try and reduce the impact of these low energy X-ray photons. If this is the no filter case right here, if we have another patient that's being imaged here and we add a beam filter right here, then the idea is that we will try and reduce these low energy X-rays so that more of the X-rays are actually going to be able to make it through the patient because we're not gonna have as many of these 
low energy x-rays. Obviously with our x-ray imaging, we know from Beer's law that most of the x-rays actually are going to interact as they pass through the patient. What we want to do is eliminate these very low energy x-rays that have no chance of actually making it to the detector. That's why we use a filter. And then we can think about our x-ray spectrum. If we draw the same type of x-ray spectrum, where we have the number of x-rays on the y-axis, the KEV on the x-axis. Again, the KV didn't change. We just added a filter, for instance. But you can see now what happened is there's actually less x-rays that are passing through. If you remember these little peaks here, those are actually what we call characteristic x-rays. See our video on characteristic x-rays and x-ray production. If you don't remember what that is, this whole hump here is all due to the Bremsstrahlung radiation. But in general, what you can see is that now there's a few of these events here. So there's a little bit of these lower energy x-ray photons that are still in your beam, but we've significantly improved it such that now those low energy x-rays, we've filtered those out. So we're not going to be depositing as much dose near the surface, which actually doesn't have a chance of making it to the image receptor. Again, this is in the case of the no filter. And then this is the case after you had your filtration. For patient safety, the NCRP has defined limits, namely the minimum amount of filtration that you're going to want to have. And that will depend on the size of the patient for reasons we've talked about, namely if you're trying to image actually a very small object, such as the human breast in the case of mammography, then you don't have to be as concerned about filtering out those low energy x-rays because that object is actually not that large. So it's possible for some of them to make it through. So for mammography, the limit is actually 0.5 millimeters of aluminum. And then for dental, we're actually talking about 1.5 millimeters of aluminum. So a little bit larger than mammography. But if there's one number you're gonna remember, it would be the general purpose radiography number of two and a half millimeters of aluminum. That applies to radiography systems, both fixed and mobile, as well as fluoroscopy systems. Basically, general purpose radiography where you're trying to get through a regular sized person, this is actually two and a half millimeters of aluminum as a basic requirement. And then in CT, we're always trying to penetrate through, we're trying to take multiple views. We're not looking in general at just one small object. The requirement there is for three millimeter equivalent of aluminum for the pre-patient filtration.